Hey guys, welcome back to another Marketer's Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Daniel, the content director at Dashclicks. And today we have the super cool Jessica Stansberry from Hey Jessica coming out all the way from West Jefferson, North Carolina. Hello, welcome. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm I'm really excited you're here. You, you got some like, um, you got like an energy and I think we're this podcast might run a little over time. <laughs> I do. I have a lot of energy. <laughs> so, yeah, it might. You, you may be right. But it's a good thing. It's a good yes. thing. Yes, so, it is. So what is it that you actually do and how do you generate revenue? Oh, great question. <laughs> so <laughs> essentially, I teach people how to be content creators, whether that's creating content to market their existing business or to be a content creator as a full-time gig, like with sponsorships and affiliate marketing and things like that. So I do that on YouTube, which is where I have my biggest following. I have like, I don't know, hundred and almost 160,000 subscribers, I think. And I have a podcast. It's on hiatus right now. It's just called the Hey Jessica podcast, but um, I do that through courses and things like that. So the bulk of my revenue comes from online courses and I have funnels set up and all of that good jazz. All the good stuff. Uh, yeah, all the good stuff. <laughs> and then I, I obviously make money from things like uh, Google AdSense for putting videos on YouTube. Um, right, and right. yeah, yeah. And so like any videos I put on YouTube get monetized and I make money from that. Sometimes that's a lot. Sometimes it's a little. It, it's really all over the place. So it's not the thing I count on. Well, um, if you need a guest in your podcast, I'm available. To yeah, okay. It. <laughs> okay. <laughs> for sure. For sure. And then, uh, yeah, I do sponsorships. So, um, I just started taking on sponsorships like in the last year or so, because I had really held off on that, but the bigger my audience grew, the more I was like, I'm leaving money on the table not to do this, yeah. you know? And then, um, I have a pretty decent affiliate marketing revenue stream too. So I think it's, it's pretty well, all of those things, but courses would be the main thing. Man, I just interviewed a guy named John and he, he sort of fell into product reviews. Mm -hmm. And so he found it to be, which I found it to be wild, um, the consistency and sort of how easy he made it seem Yes, with, especially with affiliate marketing. Cause I know affiliate marketing seems so, uh, daunting to get into. You're like, oh, mm -hmm. it's really difficult. But, um, if you do it the right way, it could be definitely profitable. But when did you start doing all this? Yeah. Oh. That's a loaded question. Um, so, so when I was in college, I actually had started a marketing company. I'm going to do that in air quotes because I didn't make any money, but I started a marketing company because my degree was in advertising and I was like, this seems easy. Uh, nobody hired me, but <laughs> I have a similar I, story. <laughs> yeah. And then I got a corporate job that was just terrible. It was just a terrible job. We, I live in a like a tiny speck of the world, like smallest town you'll ever go to ever in the whole, in the whole world. I'm two hours from a target. Like, yeah, ooh. Oh, how, see? How, how small is it? Like, is there like a thousand people? Oh, so like the actual town that I live in, there's only like 200 people. Oh um, God. yeah, <laughs> but we don't really like segregate like that. We kind of yeah. just take it as like the whole County is our town, if that makes sense. Yeah. So right. in the, in the County, there's like 20,000 people, but it's still very small. Oh um, God. yeah. So we have a Walmart, we have a few like fast food places and that is about it. I have to drive like 45 minutes away to get Chick-fil-A. It's a problem. <laughs> oh no. You. Yes. How my kids deal with that. I know my kids are like, anytime we get in the car to go anywhere, they're like, are we going to where the Chick-fil-A is? I'm like, oh, ah, yes, we will go to where the Chick-fil-A is. <laughs> like a family trip. See, we have the, we have a different problem here where um, we have a really small town kind of in between two large cities, but it's being right. developed really quickly. So it's becoming like a really crowded small town. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting. Yeah. Now we're actually having a similar thing, except we're not getting like conveniences. It's just people. So, so like we, during COVID, we have like fiber internet, you know, we got a grant years ago to get fiber right. internet. So we have like the fastest internet in the country in this like teeny tiny town. And so a bunch of people started working from home, right. During COVID and now they want to live in the country. And so like it's, it got flooded. Um, wow. but yeah, so where, what was that talk? Oh, how I got started. Yeah. <laughs> <Where was> I <laughs> so uh, I got a job in corporate and, um, absolutely hated it. And then I had my first son when I was 24 
And I was like, you know what? I just, it is not worth it to me to go to a job that I hate every day while somebody else raises my kid, you know? And not spend time with them. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I mean, I just quit my job and it, we couldn't afford it at the time <laughs> by any means. So I had to find a way to make money. That's basically what it was. And OnlyFans was not a thing yet. I couldn't sell my feet pictures, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's, it's hey, not a thing. Now you can if you want to. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm like, this is not a thing where, when I quit. I'm jealous. Oh um, <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> but I basically taught myself web design. I had some graphic design sc skills from college, but I taught myself web design and ran a graphic and web company for about five years. And then I started putting videos on YouTube basically as a way to like help the people who were coming to me. So like, here's how you get a domain. Here's how you do an email address or yeah, right. whatever. See, that, that's then, so similar to what, that's, that's so similar to my story. I had a corporate yeah. job I hated. I quit. I started running a marketing agency. And actually funny enough, it was through Dash Clicks. Um, and for, I mean, it just, stuck with it because when you start a business you're like smacked in the face with reality <laughs> yeah. you keep trying you like i got my first client after two months uh actually eight months yeah like 100 bucks a month after one yeah. month they they fired me yep <laughs> like it was, it was yeah. very difficult do you go after like a specific avatar or a niche so i used to be more niche down than i am now um but i really don't like now it's very much so i want to talk to entrepreneurs who want to create content that sells their things yeah or I want to talk to content creators who want to make money from their content. So essentially it all comes down to the content creator in one, you know, one way or the other. Um, but it's really fun because the bigger you grow an audience, or at least in my instance, the more I can talk about, like the less niched I have to be, the less like specific I have to be. And I love that because right. I don't really like having to like only talk about one thing. It's almost like when you try to niche, 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 whatever. I, I say niche just because I'm Southern and it sounds funny if I try and say it the fancy way. Okay. You say, niche. you say what you say. I, I don't know. I haven't figured it out. Yet. I'm still trying to figure out if I like niche or niche. Well, well the <laughs> phrase, uh, the riches are in the niches. Ooh, that's better. Okay. You know, like it's niche. So okay, I, I like niche. <laughs> See, what I found was it's funny. Cause I feel like when you niche down, you grow to a point where there's like an equilibrium where you start getting inquiries from other people outside your niche. Yes. And then what are you going to do? Go like, oh, I'm sorry. I don't work with you. Yeah. It, it kind of eventually becomes, you kind of get really broad and even yeah. to scale, you have to get broad anyways. But since it seems like you've scaled something into something more profitable now, do you have any team members on your team? Yes. Yes, I do. Um, so I have one full have? time. Yeah. So I used to have a lot of contractors. So my team used to look like just a shit ton of con Can I say shit? I guess. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> a crap ton, a poop ton of contractors. Now I have to edit um, that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it, during COVID I was, I was losing my mind. My kids were home trying to do school. I was trying to, you know, like be teacher, which is not what I want to do with my life, you know, and then also run my business. And then all these contractors were also having issues. And so, um, it, during COVID, I actually got rid of all of my contractors and hired my first full-time employee. She's my operations manager. And then we have oh, a part-time employee who is our customer service manager. Um, and we really, she just really handles, like, she's the one you communicated with to book this podcast. Right. Like, yeah. So she handles all of that kind of stuff, all of the customer service inquiries, all the sponsorship inquiries, things like that. And then we have a couple of contractors here and there. So we have some video editors that we work with and, you know, we'll occasionally pull on other contractors, but that's pretty well it. I, I run a pretty lean team, but they're, they're super productive and it, it's been amazing. I, I'm so glad to have like, that's awesome. Gotten, yeah. Gotten employees. <laughs> it's great. I, running a business from home is difficult. Yeah. And then having like a team that suffers the consequences of just not being organized or like mm -hmm. you have too many people Yes, could be detrimental. I, I've been in that situation too. Yeah. <laughs> it's so <laughs> yeah, funny how similar, sure. like we've, these situations we've had. Um, so you pretty much have more students than clients, right? Oh, yeah. oh absolutely. Yes. So like I how many do students any do you think you have in total? Oh, thousands. I don't know. I would have... <laughs> I would have to, I would have to like do some number crunching and I don't, I'm not willing to do that, but thousands for sure. Uh, I and do. And your audience just must be way more than your students you have. 
Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty large. I mean, I have 160 some thousand on YouTube. Uh, my podcast has been in the top 100, top 200 of Apple multiple times. Congrats. That's um, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Email list, you know, my Instagram is like 20,000 people. So I have a decent amount of following and that's, that's what I wanted to do. Like when I was doing yeah. client work, when I was doing web design, I was like, this is dumb. I don't want to do this anymore because it was just, I was still tied to like what my clients need. I felt like they were now my boss versus, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, like being my own boss. Like and one so client, um, secured all your hours for the week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was, it's, I just didn't like working like that. I, it's great. I'm not like dogging that model, you know, that business right. model. It just wasn't right for me. Well, especially really, if you have the right team behind you. Yeah. That can do it for you. Yeah. Otherwise you yeah, stuck and in see, this rabbit hole. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I didn't at the time, like when I was doing web design, I, there was no world where I could have afforded, you know, team members and things like that. Um, I had some contractors, I had some virtual assistants, but nothing like insane. And now we actually run like some under the table kind of services. I don't promote them very much, but like yeah. we, we run some YouTube channels for some people and have like an agency style under that for like lead generation and YouTube management. Um, but my team handles it all. Like I was just telling my husband yeah, yesterday. Amazing. Yeah. I'm like, I, I spend about five to seven minutes a month <laughs> probably on these clients. Cause I check in on their stuff and make sure everything's going okay. Right. And then, um, yeah, I'm coming up with like their topics and making sure that nothing's, you know, well, you got, your, you got your operations on point. It seems like, yes, I do. Jeez. I do. So it what is your, what is your, what is your pricing model look like? So it's all over the board. I have courses that are you know, $27. I have courses that are $2,000. Like it, it kind of is all over the mm. board, you know, and it actually probably sets you up for a good value ladder. It seems like so yeah. you get people in for a smaller thing. They build your trust. They see your mm -hmm. content and then you yep. upsell them for the larger courses. For was, sure. that, was that designed specifically for that? Retroactively. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of did it on accident. And then I was like, wait, I need to like go back and get the people who can't afford a $2,000 course. You know, like mm. there are a lot of people in my audience who are just starting and they can't, they can't pay that. And I totally understand that I couldn't have either. Um, right. and so I have a lot of like low cost offer funnels. So basically like $27 and then there's like an order bump and then there's a one-time offer and you know, those kinds of things, the click up or uh, click funnels model. Oh, sorry, um, right. but yeah. I don't use click funnels cause I don't like them, but <laughs> oh man, <laughs> oh man. Sorry. Uh, sorry, Russell. <laughs> sorry, Russell. I like Russell. I just don't like the company. Um, but like I have a lot of those and then those sell in either like either I run ads or in my organic content, or even in my email funnels, sell people into like my more expensive things. Right. So like what generates you the most, what like moves your money needle the most and generates the most revenue that you do? Courses hands down. Um, and for me, it's usually like, I will do about one live launch a quarter of one of my larger pressed courses. So I have a course called YouTube rock stars, which I teach people how to be on YouTube. Um, and then I have a course called Course Academy where I teach people how to create courses, which is very meta and very funny. Um, but it, it does really well. It's one of my signature courses. So I will do um, like a live launch once a quarter for one of my bigger courses. And then the other courses sell on autopilot, um, like the smaller things. Right. We usually have, you know, ads or organic content from YouTube that is constantly funneling people into those. Um, and so courses hands down are my biggest income stream for sure. So like what, what gets you kind of this? Well, actually, here's a question. Do you, mm -hmm. do you even need to talk to your students or do you offer communication or is it kind of just the content is your communication, which gets you in front of these students and yeah. then they go, Oh, I would love to learn from Jessica. Yeah. Some courses have a community element built in and some don't. So if it's one of my like lower cost offers, they don't have a community element built in at all. Um, but if it's one of my higher price things, so if it's like a thousand dollars or more, definitely there's a community. So there's Facebook groups. Um, right. I do have a discord channel for like my Patreon esque membership that I have. So they can ask questions in there. Um, but yeah, like in the smaller offers, no, I mean, we don't, we don't offer any kind of community or communication except for email. We we're always like, Hey, you can email us if you need help. Um, yeah. I mean, that makes it's sense. Self-explanatory. It's just not, it's just not yeah. high enough. 
Yeah. So like, what's the most, what's the most, so what's, well, actually, what's your most successful automation in your business that either saves you the most time or you just can't operate without? Oh my goodness. That is a great question. Um, you know, I'm going to say our email system, like not email marketing, just managing my inbox system. Oh, um, interesting. Yeah. And so we use some softwares for that, but also it's mostly people in there. Um, uh, yeah, I don't yeah. check my own email because email is a major bottleneck for me. I will get stuck and then I forget what I'm doing. And then I'm putting out this, you know, everybody does this with Agreed. email, like, you know, so being able to like not check my email and only be responsible for things that, you know, like maybe once a month, somebody will be like, Hey, you have something in your inbox you need to handle. But other than that, my team handles the rest of it. Isn't it insane? It feels like when I have to manage my emails, like the busier I get, I forget about my emails and it's like oh, late at night. I'm like, Oh my God. Yeah. I gotta go take care of my emails. But it feels like you're pulling out paper, writing the note and mailing it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. And then managing it is just trying to keep it organized is awful. Absolutely. So we have a lot of systems in place. Like we use ClickUp as our, like our project management system. So like we, you, we will like forward email or my team will forward emails into ClickUp so that I can like review sponsorship requests or mm. podcast requests or, or things like that. So that it's not me having to go in the inbox and get lost. It's me going to one place and like trying to filter through all of them at one time. That's that is, oh man, that. It's so funny. I had like an aha moment. I'm like, that is, that is, it's the most simple thing in the world. Uh, quick story. I was, I went to this like meeting one time um, and it was full of these business, I would say like old money, let's say that. So they all kind of are kind of the older guys that hang around the table on like a Thursday yeah. morning at 7 a.m. drinking their coffee, <laughs> joking around. And they're like, oh yeah, by the way, I own like half the Walmarts or something like that, you know, those kind of guys. And I went to one of these, I don't remember what, what it was for, but I went. And it was time for them to, each person would stand up and say, what are you struggling with most in your business? And one of the guys stood up, he had like a law firm or something. He actually, his CRM, which actually I have a good question for you about that. Yeah. Um, his CRM was his email. So he managed his projects, his customers and clients, everything through email. He said, I spend about six hours a day on wow. email. And I only have the remaining, you know, four, he has to extend his days to actually yeah. do other things. He's like, I spent I like three not. hours in the morning, just managing my emails. I'm like, <laughs> I believe it. Like I, I get hundreds of emails a day between like sponsorship requests, podcast guest requests, collaboration requests, you know, affiliate requests, like our, our actual customer service for our courses. Like there's hundreds of emails a day. And that is something I hired out years ago and it has been yeah. life-saving well and it i can notice that your email is extremely organized because when i yeah. when i reached out to you i mean you guys responded i mean i don't remember what it was but i would say in a fair amount of time yeah and then yeah. your assistant handled that extremely well yeah yeah because we have processes in place so she is part-time and she checks the inbox first thing in the morning and first thing in the afternoon so that like there's never, you know, more than like six hours going between like us responding to emails. Oh, sure. And then she, there are so many processes in place. Like we have a page on the website that has my headshot, my bio, my logo, like everything. That was so very when convenient. We, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so when we like sign up for a podcast interview, they'll just like drop the link. Like here's where you can find all of that. And so it's because I do a lot of the same stuff, we can really set it up on automation and then somebody else besides me can handle it because I can promise it won't be as good if I do it. <laughs> like I am too, it, I, it's too much. I, I get distracted. Right. So like what, what system do you use to manage? Like, um, so if you get students that come in and may not purchase, they purchase. So like, what's kind of the CRM system you use to manage all your students to like retarget them or reach out to them or. So as far as like our email marketing, we use ConvertKit. So basically, um, you know, if they you know, if somebody signs up for a freebie or whatever, they're in ConvertKit. If they, if they buy something, they're in ConvertKit and we can remarket to them that way. Um, but as far as like managing our email, like my actual inbox, you're going to die. We use Gmail and we love it. Oh, I love like Gmail it, too. Is, it is so good for what we do. So like I have a folder that's specifically for me. 
if my assistant sees something like, let's say my tax lady is like, Hey, I need this from you. Sure. My assistant can't help. She can't do that. So she'll just like, put that, put that in, you know, in my folder. And then she sends me a message and she's like, Hey, there's something in your folder you need to look at. So oh, cool. it's, it's spectacular, but as far as like keeping up with customers, clients, that kind of thing, all of our email list, all of that, that goes in convert kit. See what I love about that is it's so simple. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if you, Oh my God, how funny would that be? I feel like if you went to a big speech, you're like, Hey, yeah. we're going to pay you $50,000. Come, come yep. speak to our people. Oh, great. Give us some like efficiency tips about yeah. business. And you're like, first of all, get a Gmail account. Yes. Make one folder. Yes. Put, put emails in the folder that belong to you. People must be like, what? Yeah. <laughs> I know. And it's so funny. I, I run a really like lean and efficient business. I always have, um, because I can't stand to complicate things. Like, I'm like, why are we using 82 things to do this one thing that we, or you need you know, a separate yeah. software for each little thing you're trying to do. Yeah. Each subscription and right. And like, why are we paying like, you know, thousands of dollars a month for like these random things that don't really make any sense, you know? Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm big on efficiency, like time, freedom and efficiency are my biggest things I would say are like hierarchy for me. Like I am like, those are super important. And yeah. I don't want my, as much as I hire out things, I still don't want my team spending hours and hours on things they don't need to spend their time on. Like I need them where I need them. Not like, Oh, you know, we've got to go over here and go over here and go over here. Oh, right. So I keep everything really simple because it works. And once we found a system that worked, like, why would we move from it? Well, again, it's, it seems like you're just so swamped with things all the time. And so even yeah. when I did a simple thing with reaching out, most of the time it's overlooked and it takes, mm -hmm. you know, if at all they get back to me, yes. it takes months or something. Yeah. So I kind of got a taste of, wow, Jessica's really running like a really clean machine, yep. Yep. honestly. So like when you're selling, I know when you're selling your smaller courses, it's kind of a quick funnel sale, let's say yes. with some upsells, but when you're doing the higher ticket courses, how does that sales process look like? Do you, do you, um, get on a zoom call with them or. No, I hate sales calls. Like I hate mm. them so much. I will not do them unless I have to, I hate sales calls. Um, and, and I'm an extrovert. I love to talk to people. It's not that it's just like, I don't know. I can sell my stuff really well to the masses and selling one-to-one -one feels like too much pressure to me. So what I do is I have live launches. And so all of the content that I'm doing for the quarter is generally gaining leads and getting people interested in whatever that thing is I'm going to launch at the end of the quarter, or I have old content that's doing that or whatever. Um, and so then at the end of the quarter, we will send or whenever we do our launch, it doesn't have to be at the end of the quarter. Sometimes it's at the beginning or the middle or whatever. Yeah. We will send emails to my list and I'll promote it on Instagram and we'll promote it on YouTube and all the things. And we'll be like, Hey, we're doing this free webinar and get people to sign up for the free webinar. And then mm, yeah, I sell yeah. on that. Yeah. And webinars aren't as good as they used to be. Uh, mine still convert pretty high, but it's, it's once I get people on there, my actual conversion of live show up rate is, is much less than it used to be. So sometimes it's a webinar. Sometimes it is a paid challenge. Um, we've played around with like paid webinars. I'm actually doing one of those soon, mm -hmm. but I'm not, it's pitch free. So I basically took one of my smaller courses and broke it down into a paid webinar format. So there's oh, a ton cool. of, yeah, yeah. There's a ton of different ways to do uh -huh. it or that I do it. Um, but as far as like my bigger courses, it's usually a free webinar. And then I pitch them into, you know, a special offer with like bonus. So, so you're really just building your credibility through your content mm -hmm. and the audience that follows you, you know, for years mm -hmm. and they just get to know you. And then yeah. you're just offering a resource to them where it builds your credibility higher. And then, so asking for $2,000 sales is just sort of like, well, of course. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I've never really I? had any trouble. <laughs> yeah. I've oh never had God. any trouble. I mean, people, people are normally, if they sign up for a webinar, they followed me for a while and they know that they already trust me. Right. Yeah. And cause I give so much away for free that it doesn't, you know, it, there's no disconnect there. It's not like somebody showed up to a webinar and just found me yesterday. That's usually not what's happening at all. So how do you like if people who don't purchase and you need to follow up with them, are you primarily using email or like what other uh, retargeting strategies are you using? Yeah, anymore, it's mostly email. Um, and, you know, we will say like, oh, they signed up for the webinar in ConvertKit and then they didn't purchase. So like 
let's send them an email or whatever. Yeah. It, I used to retarget a lot with ads like Facebook ads and things like that, but I don't like, they just got on my nerves. Like the, the ad <laughs> cost went up so high in 2020 and then like has barely come down. And I just gave up. I'm like, you know what? I don't care. I have so much organic content that I don't need paid ads as much. So it's, it's fine with me to like continue to follow up them with the email. And at that point, what I generally do is I'll be like, Hey, if you have a question, like DM me on Instagram and I am always in my Instagram DMS. And that way I can really get that like personal connection with them. People must, people must love that. But how do, how yeah. do you manage that? Well, so you must get a lot. You have your, yes. No, my Instagram DMs are the only place that you can actually get me. So that's really? it. Yes. Um, so my YouTube comments, I will manage them for the first like 30 minutes to an hour of the video. And then my team takes over because it just becomes too much, but yeah. I want to be in there. I don't want to be like, you know, oh, I gave content and then I'm not going to help anybody. Or you, know? or you never get a response back from your comments, right? which is the right. worst. Yes. And we try and respond or at least like or heart or something, all of our comments. Right. Um, and then we have, we have like a brand Instagram, which is just like, Hey, Jessica and TV or something like that. Yeah. And my team manages that one. And obviously you can't get me on email and you know, all of these things, but my Instagram DMS are where I keep it. Like you can totally get in touch with me there. I only have, and I say only 20,000 followers on Instagram. So it's not really that unmanageable for me yet. Um, and when it gets that way, I'll come up with a better system. But right now I check it in the mornings. I usually check it around lunchtime and then I usually check it in the afternoon. And so that way I'm kind of keeping up with everything. And I have a lot of like canned responses. So, you know, somebody sends me like, Hey, do you have, do you need, like, I need help with such and such. I'll have like a canned response that I can go copy. What, and paste. what kind of questions, what just briefly, like what kind of questions do you usually get that you can respond yeah. quite easily to. Yeah. So a lot of it is, I just found you on YouTube and I'm trying to quit my job. What do I need to do? Oh, yeah. I would like to start a business where blah, blah, blah. You know, here's the mm -hmm. business I would like to start. Do you think it's a good idea? Like that's a lot of the like businessy questions, but I also keep my Instagram like fairly personal too. So a lot of times my DMS are just fun, right? Oh, like, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. you know, it's just like, I live on a farm. So I'll like share that, <laughs> like there's a goat in the yard and or Chick-fil-A is 40 minutes away and 40. Yes. And target. Oh, Lord y'all. When I go to target, it is an, <laughs> in, I put it on Instagram stories and then like, there's a whole conversation in that, you know? And so I try and keep my Instagram really like the personal place, you know, the rest right. of it is, is business. And you know, you might may or may not get me, but for the most part, you can get me on Instagram. That's really cool. So I have, I have a few more questions. These ones are going to yeah. get beefy, but before okay. we jump into that, what, what are your uh, brief thoughts on when someone wants to become a content creator full-time? Mm -hmm. Now, whatever mm -hmm. that means, they might be making money off it. They might be making sponsorships. Is there room for everyone to do this? And if there is, like, how far do you have to get of a following? Or is, is it all about a following? Or what it's about to, where you get to the point where you're like, I, I got my first sponsorship or something yeah. like that? Yeah. Well, with content creation, it is a following like vanity numbers matter because that's what like sponsorships look like or look at. They're like, oh, they have such and such followers or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't have to be a big following and sponsorships are not like the only way to make money. I think a lot of people will be like, I want to be a content creator. And they think that like, that's their goal is to get sponsors. And mm -hmm. like I say, I have not, I didn't start taking on sponsors till the last like year or so. And I've been in this for a long time. So it's not, that's not where you always want to reach for. Um, and I have seen people go full-time with content creation early, like super early because they're sharing a lot of affiliate links. Um, you know, you, you talked about somebody who was like a product reviewer. Those people can go quick because they're generally reviewing things that are expensive. <laughs> so yes. they're, yeah, their commission is much higher than if I'm sharing like you know, an SD card link, you know right. what I mean? Yeah, like totally. <laughs> it, it's much more because if I'm sharing my link to my Rodecaster pro or this microphone, I'm making way more money than if I'm sharing something that's like 20 bucks, you know? Yeah. So it kind of just depends, but yeah, you definitely need to be building a following. It's definitely, I do think it's definitely possible for everybody because somebody is going to want to follow me for a different reason. They're going to, then they're going to want to follow this person over here. Even if we talk about similar things and, 
you know, somebody might be like, okay, so this is very girly. Okay. Okay. But I get questions a lot about my hair. Like, how did you curl your hair? You have great hair. How do you do your hair? I could see that. <laughs> it's like perfect. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So I washed it today. I washed it today. So we're doing oh, good. Um, okay. awesome. Girls don't wash their hair every day. Just I, FYI. I figured that out. Okay. My, yeah. my wife kind of goes a while without washing. I'm like, yes. Babe, it's time. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually you have to, but I did today. And so like for me, they might take my hair product recommendation more seriously than this person over here, but they're probably not going to take fashion advice for me because I live in t-shirts and leggings. You know what I mean? Right. And so when you <laughs> recommend that, yeah. that's, well, first of all, you're just being genuine. You're yeah. being like, oh, I would do this, this, this. But then you're like, oh, by the way, here they are. Go ahead yep. and click through the link and make that happen. Exactly. And so it, it, it's, it's like having 20,000 friends that you just. <laughs> it really <with>. is. <laughs> and, and they, thankfully, and it's, it's one of the reasons I stay in my Instagram DMs is they feel that way to me. Like I will get messages mm. from people who are like, you feel like my best friend. Can I ask you a random question? And it is random. But I'm like, sure, yes, let's be BFFs because that's what I want because yeah. then they know it's genuine. I'm not just out here trying to like peddle products <laughs> because that's right. how I make money, right? Like, like the I will sales never share will anything. come. You're just, you're just building the community and the relationship. Absolutely. So if you're like, it's in the movies, um, you know, do you trust me? Okay, well, jump off this cliff with me because we're running yeah. away from bad guys. It's like, okay, yeah. let's do it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? exactly, exactly. So, how much revenue have you made in the past 12 months? I, I have no idea, but I would say multiple <laughs> six figures. Um, so my business generally runs in the, you know, three, four hundred thousand dollar range. And this year I've made like we're upping that. Um, but I don't I don't keep up, like I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're the first one so, to actually say that. <laughs> like I just I'm that is not where I thrive in my numbers. Like I just know what's in my bank account and that I've done well. You know what I mean? And yes. I have an accountant. That's another contractor I have, right? So I have an accountant and a CPA and people who keep up with that for me. And yeah. honestly, I just as long as I'm paying my bills I, and paying my team, I really don't care that much um, right, right. because I love what I do. And like, I'm, I'm definitely trying that's to make cool. more money. Absolutely. Right. But I can tell when that's happening. So I don't really keep like a big finger on it. You See, know, what's cool is um, again, with the, the guy I just interviewed, John, he brought that up too. He, he said um, he gave me more specific numbers because he is just more into that, but he basically was saying, it kind of doesn't really matter because if yeah. you just find something that you like and just commit to it, you're going to enjoy that more. And then the money's kind of a secondary thing. Oh, absolutely. So scaling becomes more about not necessarily how much money you're making, which sort of is the result of it, but yeah. it's more about like, I'm having a more like double the fun now. Yeah. I'm just yeah. doing more of it. <laughs> yes. And when you do find things that do both, right. When you're like in that, like Venn diagram and you start to find the overlap of like exactly. what you love and what makes exactly. you the most money, you just double down on it and it works in 2020. I like increased my income. And I don't remember if there was like a percentage that I, I'm sure there was, I'm sure somebody showed me a percentage, like your business grew this much. You're like, cool. Thanks. I just don't care. Like I did it doesn't, I don't know. It, it doesn't register. I'm not a numbers person. Yeah, um, but, I, I, agree with that. I understand. Yeah. But it grew in 2020 without me. Like, and I was just keeping my head above water. Like that's all I was doing. And so I had kind of just doubled down on what I enjoy doing and what made the, the most money kind of in that overlap yeah. and it worked. So just to, cool. you know, just to say again, multiple six figures, usually in the three, $400,000 range, I'm hoping that's to hit 500,000 this year. That's my goal. That's incredible. So yeah. to reach your next goal of now, it doesn't necessarily, no, it could be revenue or it could also be kind of a combination of just like where you like to see this in the next 12 months. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, what, what do you have to change to get there? Yeah. So for me, it's always an audience growth thing like that. If I grew my audience, my income will grow hands down always. That's just how it works because I have all of this organic content out on YouTube that is selling my stuff for me. I don't really have to do a lot like the videos. And, like, and once the videos are up, they just yeah. keep, they just stay yeah. there. And on YouTube, they live forever. I have some videos that, well, they just recently kind of started dropping off, but I had videos that were four and five years old that were still driving me so much like leads and sales. And wow. so 
yeah, it's amazing. YouTube is an amazing platform. It's one of the reasons I'm like so into it because it can live for so long. Just today, I saw a video recommended to me that was two years old and I watched every minute of it, you know? Right. So it's, yeah, it's awesome. But I have content just selling for me all the time on Instagram, on YouTube, like all of these things. That's and so, so for cool. me, if I just work on the things that grow my audience, the rest of it happens. And so I do have to remember to launch things though. Sometimes I get, <laughs> sometimes I get in like, like I'm just audience building. I'm just audience yeah, building right. and I forget to sell to them, you know? <laughs> and cause I do have the smaller things that they can buy and people definitely go and buy my larger courses you know, sporadically, sure. but I have way more bigger influx of money when I actually go out and launch them. So sometimes I have to like remind myself that I need to do that. <laughs> and now that I have a team, it's much better because they'll sit down and be like, what are we doing? You know, and, and that way we can kind of plan it out for the year or the quarters or whatever. Right. So this podcast has a lot of listeners who are well, it's, it's a slew of people. So we have yeah. some people that are just really excelling. We have some people in the middle and we have a lot of listeners that are just brand new and yep. brand new enough to where they, I said this in the last few other podcasts where they might be new enough where they don't even really know what a CRM is. Yeah. But, but more than ever, everyone wants to start their own business and work for themselves. Yes. So like, what's the number one tip you could give to a business owner that you feel is most practical? Um, so they don't waste years of, you know, yeah. time essentially. Yeah. Start with a service. Everybody wants to start a business and think they're going to like be a YouTuber overnight or be a podcast, like whatever the scenario is, be a content yeah. creator. And if you're trying, like I have been in a position, it sounds like you have too, where I hated my job so much and I would have done anything to get out of it. And yeah. if you're in that position, you can't wait a year or two to grow an audience who's going to buy $27 products from you and make enough for a full-time income. But you could, you know, charge somebody $5,000 for a website and be able to quit with one client. Right. And so I always tell people like, start with a service. And sometimes you have to run one business, like run a service business to afford you the ability to create the actual business you want to create. My husband's a really good example of this. So um, he, of course, living with me, he eventually got to the point where he was like, okay, I really want to be self-employed, you know, um, because he wasn't. And he worked for corporate for 14 years. And so this past year in September, he quit his job. And wow. he, so we live on a farm. My husband ha has always loved to farm, but it's not a full-time situation at all. Like he's always just kind of dabbled in it and it's a little money here and there. More like and, a hobby sort of. Yes. And, and honestly, that's a lot of the farms around here because we like, like in Texas, you can go buy, you know, hundreds of acres, you know, yeah. the most you can buy here is like a hundred and that's rare. And we live in the mountains. So a lot of it's so steep, you can't even use it. So it's not as like prevalent that somebody's a full-time farmer here, but he wanted to get to that point. And he'll never, he would have never gotten to that point in corporate because he didn't have the time to put into it. So he quit his job to, with the eventual goal to farm full-time, but he needs money to put into that. Right. And so now he's doing like consulting and project management in his field to make the money to put into the farm so he can farm full-time. So sometimes so cool. you just have to do one thing to get to another, but it, it's the bridge because otherwise you're still standing somewhere where you can't even see a path to that other thing you want to do. So start with a service or some, hone in on something that you feel like you could learn quite, quite easily or do yes. just focus and on charge one person. Good for. Like <laughs> yeah. What's that? And, and charge good money for, you know, like something don't that don't be you afraid can... to charge yeah. what you want. Mm -hmm. Yep. Hmm. I do know this when you okay. undercharge you instantly regret it. <laughs> oh, amen. I spent years undercharging for my web design services because I didn't know. Like I didn't, I was 24 years old. Like it's like, I was just running this business so I could stay home with my kid. Like I wasn't like trying, you know, at the time I wasn't trying to like build a business. I didn't know any better. Yeah. Um, so I was like, 
my first website, I did a custom website for $150. I've done that before too. <laughs> yeah. And when I left, I was charging 6,000. <laughs> so, That's way better. You know, yeah. Way better. But it, it took a really long time to get there and a lot of mindset work. Cause I really like screwed that up. I'm like, I don't understand who's going to pay for this. I don't, I don't get it. Well, it's also, it also like takes the nerves away when you charge, when you say a lesser number. Yes. You're like, Oh, it's only 20 bucks. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Big deal. yeah. Yeah. Instead no of like, deal. okay, how much is it? And you're like $20,000. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. Gosh. So last question I have for you is you kind of mentioned what like your favorite tool is in your business mm -hmm. that you just can't live without, but just personally to kind of rephrase the question, uh, since we have all these new people that want to start their own business, what's like the number one tool you think any, every business should have? Oh yeah. Great question. A project management tool, I would say would be the biggest one. Um, I use ClickUp and I love them. Um, but there's so many out there, right? Like there's Asana and Trello and like Monday and Notion and all of these Stop. ones that you can use. Yeah. But I use ClickUp and I love them, but I would say that would be like the number one because you can organize your brain. And then as you bring on team members, it's much easier to like streamline those processes. If you're, if you have clients, you can streamline that. Um, so for instance, like sometimes through our courses, we will give away like audits or things where I like take a deep dive on someone's whatever. And instead of having like 82 places where that goes and trying to keep up with all of that in the, in the email system that they get after they purchase, there's a link where they just fill out a form. It automatically goes into ClickUp tags oh, cool. me. Yeah. So I get a notification mm -hmm. has a due date so I can see it on a calendar and we're done, you know? So I would say a project management tool would be like the number one thing, especially if they're wanting to be like a content creator, because I, you know, I have to manage, I have to know what's going live when YouTube is very yeah. much so a consistency thing, you know? Well, also, and also just, you can start off on the right foot, mm -hmm. having the things that take a lot of time already automated so exactly. that you can just focus on, you know, servicing that one client that you'll, it'll take up all your time for two weeks. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's fantastic. Well, Jessica Stansberry again, first of all, thank you for coming on. Yes. Thank um, you for of me. Hey, Jessica coming out from West Jefferson, North Carolina. Yep. And you'll know you're in West Jefferson because if you're 45 minutes away from that's right. Chick-fil-A, you'll be, you'll be you're there. there. You're there. Yep. Exactly. Thank you, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Yes. Thank you for having me. Of course. I'll talk to you soon.